Welcome. You're listening to Sports Econ 101, the, uh, the show where we the, the show where we talk about sports and business um, from a business perspective. Holy smokes! Let's try this again. This is a show where we discuss sports topics from a business perspective. I'm your host Edward Brown, along with my co-host FP Santangelo Jr. and Russell Jackman. Vern Glenn is off today. Uh, at each commercial break, we're going to ask a sports trivia question. And now today, you guys are going to hate me because I've got hard world series questions right. yeah, they're, yeah they're I'm, not... I'm already i'm already picking uh honus wagner as one of the <laughs> <laughs> i'm just yeah, going he, to reserve that you know what you're right he's the answer to every single question we have <laughs> well that's like the only after we get past like 1950 that's about the only player him and babe ruth and and cy young are about the only ones that i can remember no, I got something from the okay, the fifties. I got something uh, from the nineties. Oh, and I got something from the probably the sixties. But maybe yeah, yeah, from the sixties, I think. I don't think it's from the seventies, but um all right. When we come back, we're gonna talk about a few things. Uh FP's got a very interesting story about uh NFL highlights and who's got the rights to that. Um, Rob Manfred thinking that the A's are actually going to be leaving Oakland pretty soon. I mean, that's been talked about for how many years now? Like, mm -hmm. like, like uh, four, four commissioners ago. Um, Tom Brady finally gets divorced from Giselle. Uh, just, we'll talk just a little tiny bit about that. Uh, Adidas and Kanye West. Yay, I guess. Is it Yee? Is that how you pronounce it? Yee? Yay. There you go. Okay. Well, it's a little easier than uh, when Prince changed his uh, name to a logo. That was a, that was a little challenging. All right. And uh, the Big 12 media rights uh, with ESPN and Fox. And then we'll talk a little bit, a little bit about the Phillies, which uh, as we record today, last night's game was rained out. But this segment of Sports Econ 101 is sponsored by Pacific Private Money, still providing mortgage investments yield mortgage investments yielding anywhere from 7 to 9% secured by real estate. Check them out, pacificprivatemoney.com. Stay with us. You're listening to Sports Econ 101. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown along with F.P. Santangelo Jr. and Russell Jackman. F.P., start us off. Uh, something about NFL highlights. Yeah, guys. So I don't know if you know about Pat McAfee and the Pat McAfee Show. It's one of the most listened to and streamed to shows that talks about the NFL. He has Aaron Rodgers on. He has tons of big, big guests on all the time. Next to ours. Next to ours. Next, Next to ours, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, he had a dispute yesterday. It turned out that the NFL gave him a cease and desist letter that he can't use NFL logos and team logos on his graphics. But here's the catch. He pays $4 million a year, a season, to have NFL highlights and to have NFL rights on his show. So that way he can go over plays with players. So that way he can show highlights and other things. Because it is not only an audio uh, medium, it's a visual medium, too. You can watch it online. So this is kind of interesting because when you look at other markets and how other people operate, you have the NBA, for example, right, that allows you to do whatever, Right. MLB is starting to get really good at this. They let anybody stream and do whatever they want. But Pat McAfee, who's one of their biggest supporters, really, and really does a lot of good for the game of football, right? And he gets a lot of young eyes on football, yeah. is being attacked by the NFL, and he can't use logos anymore. Like, this is ridiculous to me. You know, and I think okay, I'm going to take a guess. And, and uh, Russell, you, you, uh, you, you back me up uh, or, or argue with me as, as the attorney. I'm going to guess that the, the, the issue has to be that they are not actually promoting his show. They're not sponsoring his show. So he, they don't want to be associated from the standpoint of, let's say he goes off on a rail, and then people will assume that that is the NFL talking. Very similar to like when I've approached... Um, Almost all of these shows, including this one, say the opinions and uh, yep. uh, thoughts expressed by the host are not necessarily um, the yeah. ones of the NFL. So that's, but the, the thing is we have to think about the poor NFL. They're barely making it right now. <laughs> they need all the money they can get. And so, you know, they should charge him more and uh, we should all be happy that the NFL <laughs> will make it through next season. If they, they get more money. <laughs> oh my so God. So I can't paying, believe it. <laughs> Four million dollars a year yeah. for rights. Yeah, for if you NFL paid eight rights. million, if you paid eight million, they'd probably let them use the logos. 
it's crazy, right? It's absolutely crazy. The NFL has the strictest guidelines out of any single professional sports league. Trust me, working at NBC Sports Bay Area, we weren't allowed to show highlights of the 49ers game. Yeah. After the 49ers game, it was illegal. We couldn't because we get sued to oblivion. Yeah. So we had to use still pictures. We had to use other things. But the fact that they can't even use logos is absolutely ridiculous. And, I guys, there's a really good tweet by uh, uh, Kurt Benkert who talked about the Fortnite, you know, the video game, their yeah. revenue, and their business model, okay, is to just let anybody do anything. They could stream. Yeah. They could have logos. They could put everything out there. They made $5.8 billion last year, a video game, $5.8 billion. In comparison, the NFL – who's a super juggernaut, made $11 billion, right? And they're the most restrictive of all time. And then when you think about it, too, Major League Baseball just came out. Rod Manfred, we'll talk about him a little bit later, just said Major League Baseball made near $11 billion last year. So there's no reason why the NFL should be limiting their media. It's costing them billions of dollars. It's ego, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and it's funny because their logo, isn't that still that, that helmet? You know, it's a little kind of like it's not even that great a logo anyway. Well, no, it's not. It's just not the all logo. The logos. It's it's all sure. team logos too. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, the thing is, you know, you got to figure that uh, McAfee is. I mean, if he's pay, spending four million dollars for highlights, I mean, who's it? Uh, uh, say Steve Sable, right? Remember how, how yeah, that was an awesome show where he would go yes. through all these fun old highlights of of old games. Um. But that was, I guess, what well, that was NFL Films Presents. So that was actually probably from them. But like George Michael's yeah. Sports Machine. You know, do you remember watching George Michael's Sports Machine? No. That's how, in the days before, uh, uh, you know, massive ESPN and, and all these other packages, there used to be George Michael's Sports Machine, and that would be on Sunday nights, and they would do a wrap-up of all everything that went on in all the different leagues and something like that couldn't exist now, at least for the NFL with something like that. And well, so how, how does that work where like, let's say if you're watching, <clears throat> uh, uh, let's say you're watching a game on Fox, but when they, uh, if it's halftime, they'll show you highlights of other games that have to be on other stations. I'm sure. Yeah. They're paying it's all the, from the dollars. NFL. No, no, they're paying four million dollars from that. Unless it's NFL Network, they're paying a rights fee for that, Russ. It's yeah, but it's a, you pay for the entire package for the NFL. Once you do pay for it, you don't have yeah. to pay each team. Oh. Yeah, no, no, no. I, 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 that, that, that totally makes sense. Okay, so that's how that works. Um, I wonder how much Pat McAfee's making to be able to. I mean, obviously, he makes not, around forty-six million dollars a year. Really, with this show, the highest-grossing show in sports right now. And what's the name? Because of the he call? had a he had a, a deal with FanDuel, I believe it was. Okay, I could be could be wrong. It could be one of the other ones, but he's making forty six million dollars a year. Wow! But he pays it. He pays for those four million dollar highlights. He has a yeah. huge crew. Trust me, I've seen his crew come into San Francisco before. Yeah, and they were using part of our station, uh, and they had a mafia. It was like oh, fifteen sure. people running the show. Well, so he pays a lot of million. salaries. So, I mean, I'm trying to think of, okay, does he have just like a bunch of sponsors? Um, yeah. That, that's what it's got to be. And, and it's funny because when does the show, what's the name of the show? Pat McAfee's show. It's the most popular show in the NFL. Wow. Oh, I mean, it's funny because, you know, I remember Dan Patrick and, and all that, but I guess he was an employee of, of uh, ESPN. So that might have been a little different. Look, everyone should just be watching the fifth quarter and, and forget yeah. about, you know, all the other shows. You should just watch the fifth quarter. With and, Vern. And I am going to tell Vern that I said that. Yeah, yeah. I, so. I will say this about the media rules and rights regulations. The NFL allows you to post highlights or talk about highlights after the last game of the week. So after Monday night football is over, uh, a sports station, a local sports station that doesn't pay for those rights can start playing the highlights for the rest of the week. Probably they think so, uh, everybody's already watched the highlights anyway. Right. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's it's one of the most limiting things in the world. And think about it. Why not just put it out there? It's like free yeah. advertising for your product. And other models have shown it to be successful. The NBA yeah. was the first to adopt this, and they're exploding over social media. And their growth cap is insane. Well, a lot of musicians were kind of saying sort of the same thing. They took the model of, you know what, just download my music for free, or they give you, you know, only so many songs to do, and it just gets the name out there. So that they can uh, sell more, uh, you know, to yeah. uh, Spotify or Pandora, because right, Pandora's probably got to pay a licensing 
to for each song uh because there, there's different ones and, and i'll tell you what is spotify a, and spotify is a big one yeah okay. so they, 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 spotify pays for the rights of the song yada 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 but the best way to make money now is to go, go independent and it showed with pat mcafee he's he went independent right he's not owned by anybody and he pays the rights for these nfl highlights but he can't use logos it's ridiculous yeah, that's crazy i mean it, it, that's funny in the uh uh well i was going to say that with the advertising um we're not being able to use them i remember trying to get on my business show <clears throat> excuse me a couple of large banks because they would advertise on sports shows and I had a really good relationship with the bankers, but they said, you know what, Edward, unfortunately, we don't know what you're going to say or not say. And it might make us, I mean, he's, he's being honest. It, it might make us look bad. And so that's why we can't do that. And I said, uh, I mean, I, I get it. You know, uh, See, what, was, what Pat, here's an idea for Pat is that he should get like his uh, children. If he has like five-year-old children, they should draw the logos. Russ, yeah, that that way, why do you say that? His kid, I don't know if it was his kids, but somebody actually did that. So he had somebody on his staff, I think, draw really, really poor uh, imitation logos for the Cleveland Browns Bengals game last night that aired on Monday Night Football. Uh, I probably got to be careful because there's still, still infringement issues. Okay, uh, guys, we're going to cut to our first commercial break. We're going to talk in hard World Series questions here. And then I'll give you an easier one. What player had established a 17-game hitting streak in World Series play? And we're, we're talking about, uh, and I'll give you a hint, it's before 1970, okay? So if anyone's done it recently, that doesn't count. Okay, now <laughs> I'll give you a little bit of an easier question. Name the two baseball teams that won three World Series in a row in the past 50 years, okay? We'll give you those two questions. All right, stay with us. You're listening to Sports Econ 101. Don't touch that dial. We're going to be right back. Well, I can give you NBA well, ones. Hey, welcome back to Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown along with F.P. Santangelo Jr. and Russell Jackman. We have a two-part question here. Actually, they're unrelated, but one's an easier one and one's a harder one. Harder question. What player had established a 17-game hitting streak in World Series play? Mickey Mantle? No, but uh, you have the right Pete team. Rose. What was that? Pete Rose. Pete Rose, no. <clears throat> Hank Joe Bauer. Joe DiMaggio. Hank, oh. Bauer. Hank Bauer. Hank Bauer. Yeah, we would have got that. You would have got that. <laughs> yeah. Come on, from 1956 to 1958. I told you. These are hard questions. Okay, now, the easier question. Uh, name the two baseball teams that won three World Series in a row in the past 50 years. The A's? The, 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 okay, I heard each of you say one, one correctly, correctly. The A's. The A's, that's right. Okay, what years? Do you remember? Yeah, it was the <laughs> 70s. It was like the, uh, the, the Charles Finley, you yeah. know, led, led A's. I remember them winning three in a row. Yep, 72, that's... 73, and 74. And then, yes. and the Yankees, that's right. Do you remember what years? Nope. It's got to be the late 90s, right? Yeah, very good. Okay, 1998, 99, and 2000. Yep. Okay. Maybe we tag team that one. Yeah. Let's yeah. go. You, you did well. Okay. Uh, just a quick thing. Uh, so Tom Brady uh, gets divorced from Giselle. That kind of sort of came out of nowhere, I think, didn't it? But apparently she Not was really. Happy. They've been, she they've been happy about him going to back to playing football, right? No, it's been talked about for about six months. There's been stirrings and stuff like that. So I think they've been preparing the media for this. Okay. And you know what? A lot of people aren't talking about how much money Tom Brady's going to make out of this deal. He's yeah, going to make a lot of money. Well, she makes more than he does, right? Yeah. She's worth double. She makes than more than worth. a couple of countries do. <laughs> she makes more money than a couple of countries do. <laughs> and so if, you just, if you're just tuning in, I, I've been in Brazil in the past couple of weeks, mm -hmm. and this is where Giselle's from. It's Brazil. Oh. You can't go anywhere in this country without seeing her face. She owns this, like, seriously, her business here is insane. She owns the most expensive jewelry shop, clothing shop, perfume, everything. Gotcha. She is like the Kim Kardashian on steroids here. Interesting. So she is worth so much money and international money, too. It's insane. So that's why Tom Brady in his career would take pay cuts to stay with the Patriots to help his teams win because she is worth so much money, billions of dollars, really? compared to his worth which I think is about still $300, $400 million. Yeah. But, I mean, if the divorce laws, if they're going by the U.S. divorce laws, I don't know where they got <laughs> married. Then, you know, he's going to make out like a bandit. But here in Brazil, if you get married in Brazil, it's almost like you sign a prenup to begin with. So whatever's yours is yours or whatever. Even after is... you get married and make your yeah. money? So, so how wow. it goes in Brazil is... <laughs> How, how they expect it is it's like a prenup. When you, like the U.S. example of a prenup, 
that's how it is in Brazil. If you get married in Brazil, whatever is yours as a guy is yours. Whatever yours is a woman. Well, that happens is yours. before you get married, though. But after you get married, there's community property. So well, how depending on where you live, depending <laughs> on where you live. <laughs> yeah. But Giselle is already a billionaire before she met Tom Brady, Got so it. I think. I think she's wow. going to be fine. But it's interesting how different uh, international marriage laws work. So yeah, kind of makes you want to stay married. Uh, <laughs> just yeah, case. it depends on. And who one you more thing, one more thing to add to this too. I'm really excited to see how Tom Brady's going to turn this around. He's had the worst start in his career yeah. with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. His team's all banged up, and he's the one of the most mentally tough individuals in the sports history, maybe like in American sports history. So I'm interested to see, maybe he won't get it done this season, but I don't think he's going to retire on the start. I think he's going to try to come back. Wow. Now, you can see a big difference when he doesn't have Gronk as a target. Yeah. He's, yeah. Uh, he's not the same Tom Brady. Yeah. So he's what, 44? Yep. 44. Wow. That's amazing. 44. I mean, I remember George Blanda playing in, in his like fifties or something, but, you know, mostly it was a place kicker by that time. It's kind of yeah. he came onto the field. Wow, that that's crazy. Uh, so talking about all this money situation, uh, so Adidas and Kanye West, uh, Ye, Ye, uh go ahead and part ways. And uh, apparently, so he went from being worth like one point two billion down to four hundred million, like overnight. I mean, was that how yep. much his his Adidas thing was worth eight hundred million dollars due to his anti-Semitic remarks? Yep. Wow, yeah, it was, it's pretty incredible. And it, I mean, it showed in the stock, right? As soon as Kanye, met, Kanye West made those remarks, as I was we talked about last time, yeah. the shares went down 20%. The shares went 20%. Yeah, but week. but I heard he's going to open up his own company with uh, Kyrie Irving. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to say that. They're going to have, uh, you know, <laughs> We Hate Jews as, uh, as their, their company name. <laughs> My it's, God. It's pretty crazy what's happening right now. And Kyrie Irving said similar remarks. And now Kanye West is even posting on social media that Kyrie Irving is making a lot of sense and more people should listen to him. So wow. it's an echo chamber. We've seen this happen in society today. You, that know what, once you know what's interesting? This is the first time I can remember where making anti-Semitic remarks actually meant something. You know, in the past, people would, were making anti-Semitic remarks and it would be like, well, uh, uh, you know, support the Palestinians or something stupid like that, you know. But, uh, but if you said anything against any other uh, race or culture, then it, you were really vilified. This is the first time I can remember. What about you, Russ? You know, people have said anti-Semitic remarks in the past, and it didn't seem to really bother anybody. We, had, we, we just got done with a president who had Steve Bannon as chief of staff. So, you know, the guy who invented the term alt-right was chief of staff. For, for yeah, what does that have to do with anti Semitic? Trump was the biggest friend of Israel, though. So I don't no, know. he's not. He's one of the biggest anti Semites that you can possibly get your hands so how on. Do, how do you account for the Abraham Accord? Because, because that was a political move to manipulate people who are soft in the head and are willing to look yeah. at, at political gestures as meaning something that it's not. Well, that, okay, okay. You know what? I'll take that any day when you have no war, but go ahead, FP. Well, so they, from a sports perspective, when's yeah. the last time somebody in sports got canceled for saying an anti Semitic remark? I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah. And yeah. Maybe I'm missing a big obvious one. So I apologize if you're listening in your car right now or at home or wherever you're at listening and you're like, oh, this guy, this guy. <laughs> but this is, this is pretty blatant, guys. And I think there's just a lot of misinformation going around. I think this is the age of, you know, conspiracy YouTube videos and Facebook. Yeah. Posts, people really get hooked and lash onto these things that just aren't true. Straight well, good, up aren't good, true. Good, good. But there aren't, as many Jew, there aren't as many Jews to stand up against anti-Semitism as okay. there are Blacks or Chinese or, you yeah, know, Latin Americans. And so they're easy to pick on. You know, it's that... It's that, you know, centuries of people saying that yeah. the Jews run Hollywood, the Jews run politics. Well, they the mostly Jews... just keep their mouths shut and, and, and just go along their merry way and, and uh, just try to make better for themselves rather than just dying on the soapbox complaining all the time. Well, you still have people wearing Camp Auschwitz sweaters, you really? know. And I, there I, was uh, something in L.A. that says Kanye was right. And there's been actually a lot of projections on the stadiums. You know the projector you can yeah. use? Oh, so, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that came across. That, that these are bad for the country. So it's actually yeah. stemmed a lot of racism and anti-Semitism. Well, go, so go, back to, go, back to go back to your Bible. It does talk about in the last days there's going to be even more. So 
it, it's a, unfortunately it's not going to get better. It's it's going to get worse. Unfortunately, I will not go back to the Bible, but thank you very much. <laughs> well, if you want to know what's going to happen in the future, that's it. Remember, history. Uh, those, if I go back to the Bible, it'll be the first time I've gone. My, so there my we go. My message, my message to everybody: just love one another. Life there you go. Yeah, we got it. And my message is: yeah. don't love the anti-Semites. Don't tolerate, yeah. you know, these these people who are wearing Camp Auschwitz sweaters. They should be vilified and treated like the enemies of democracy that they yeah, are. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I've never. I've never actually seen that. I believe you. Just go watch the uh, oh, footage of oh, the January sixth riot. You know, the, on the Capitol, but, and there's yeah, some people, some really? stupid yeah. idiot guy yeah. on the All phone. Right. With yeah. a camp <laughs> sweater. See, I think I'm peacocking. Let's move along, guys. <laughs> okay, Rob Manfred thinks the A's will leave Oakland soon. Now, we've been doing that for a long time, haven't we? Yeah, okay, soon. Okay, guys, I got to clear something up. So, Mayor Libby Schaff of yeah. Oakland said what Rob Manfred said was wrong, and they had a discussion, and that there's still a deal on track to stay in Oakland, and they're still working very hard. So, Rob Manfred kind of just spoke out of his you-know-what. Yeah, wow. Without even looking at what's been going on, so. That was another black eye for baseball. It just keeps on happening. I don't know what – what it, he just didn't have any information presented to him. He's just not been in the loop. But they're still working really hard to stay in Oakland. And I hope and they I stay think, in Oakland. And the, the, the current decline of the Giants, I think, gives Oakland its best chance to possibly succeed. Oh, that's interesting. You know. Yeah, yeah I mean, if they get a new park – well, the, the, the shine is now off of uh, Oracle. Stadium. I mean, I love Oracle Stadium. It's one of the nicest parks I've ever been to. But it's now in uh, you know twenty two years old, and and I know it makes time really like you sit back and say, oh my god, is that much time passed? But you know, if the if the A's get a brand, I see got- that is going to be good. Well, yeah, yeah. They're they're always, to- where are they thinking about potentially moving? Was it like what, Tennessee, Alabama, Vegas. Oh, that's right. Vegas. Vegas the other way. Yeah, 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 of course. Okay. Are you guys ready for our second And it's worked question? out so well for the Raiders. Well, but it's just their team hasn't done very well. But uh, That's the still. thing. You can you yeah. can move cities, but if you still suck, it's going to be hard yeah. to, to draw people. Well, that's okay. They, hey, wait. Look how many points they scored last game. Oh, yeah, zero. Yes. Okay. Zero. Yeah, so, my, my fantasy team uh, reflects that, by yeah. the way. <laughs> okay, second trivia question. What player has the highest batting average in one World Series? Okay. And I'll give you a hint. It's somewhere between 1988 and 1992. So you, so you don't have to go back to the 30s or 40s or anything like that. All right. That's our trivia question. What player has the highest batting average in one World Series? And I think I, there's, there was probably some minimum. Uh, you know, you, gotta, you can't have had like one at bat or else, you, you know, you could. You yeah, hundred right? percent. Yes. Yeah. Now this this is somebody who you might remember the name, um, and he actually had a very. I, I remember him having a good series with a different team, um, just two years before I think, and then he got traded. So it's very interesting. All right, stay with us. Sports Econ One Hundred One. We'll be right back. Yeah. Welcome back to Sports Econ One Hundred One. One more time. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with F.P. Santangelo Jr. and Russell Jackman. Our second trivia question: What player has the highest batting average in one World Series? Now, Kirby Puckett. Kirby Puckett. No, that's uh, it's yeah. not a bad guess. But um, okay, so this player, I remember him doing really well. I think because his last name is kind of interesting. I thought he did really well with the Dodgers. I did not remember him doing this well with the Reds in 1990. Huh. I don't know. Who, who did really well with the Dodgers? And, and I, I think it was in uh, the 88 World Series, and it was not uh, Kirk Gibson. Um, do you guys remember Billy Hatcher? Didn't, didn't he do yeah, really but he well with the Dodgers? Anyway, he hit in 1990 World Series, he hit only 750. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know yeah. how many at I, you know, I don't have that. I, I, I should have copied that down. I think he had like 20 at bats. Yeah, it's probably a minimum 15 at bats. Something like that. Yeah. I thought that was, I thought that was uh, pretty, pretty impressive. And again, he's one of those guys who's like, you know, comes out of nowhere, has like a really good World Series. And I, and again, I think 1988, he did really well too. He was some, he was a hero on uh, one or two games. Okay. Uh, moving on here, uh, the Big 12 media rights deal with ESPN, Fox, uh, worth 
two billion dollars each. School. Hope that includes being able to use the logos. Yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> right. Uh, probably, yeah. Um, it's each, a six-year, two billion dollar deal, by the way. Six years. Six year, and each school is going to get fifty million. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. good. So suddenly, college. You know, I think college football. Uh, was, it was I think it was very smart to to have like you know the the big championship game because uh, so, so many times it's like okay uh, you know back in in 1970 uh, Stanford won the Rose Bowl and so people just assume I the Rose Bowl was hate the, best. the ball system <laughs> I hate it despise it. it if there's one thing that I cannot stand it is the balls in sports. It's the ball it, system. Because uh, they have so many bowls that eventually even a team that's five and five gets in. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it's they're very uninteresting games. Yeah. And I don't really care who wins the Texas, you know, weed eater bowl or, you know, the the crypto, you know, fill in the blank kind of bowl. bowl? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I do think that the, the the it would be better if they did create a playoff system and had, you know, extended that out. We've they seen it in, in, in every sport. We've seen in every sport. When playoffs are expanded, it makes the sport better. It generates interest, and it generates money. You know, the bowl system does not generate money, really, except for the people who are big fans of the schools. So even in basketball, right. we have half the teams make it. But go ahead. Well, well, four months ago, they announced that they're going to expand the playoffs to 12 teams now. So yeah, we already I, got that with. Thank God. Yeah, and, and but, really – Number 13 is not going to win the championship. Let's say as much as people love to argue about that, because that's all that college football became after a little yeah. while before the playoffs was just yeah. a year long argument that my team beat this team and this team lost to that team. And so we should be ahead of this team in the polls. That's all yeah. that the arguments would be. And then my team won this bowl. So I'm better than, than this other team that won this other bowl. Well, and then can you imagine for recruiting the next year? You know, huge. I mean, uh, yeah, big. you know, you're you're, you're a big time player. You want to uh, in call in high school. You want to play for Alabama. Yeah. As <laughs> I'm a, okay as with the Bulls being gone entirely. I'm I if I'm they like, got rid of the Bulls entirely, I'd be okay. All right, go ahead, Russ. Or, I mean, go ahead, Effie. Sorry. Oh, as a casual uh, college football fan, I'd say that the bowl games are fine as long as there's football on. Like, just put football on for me during the holidays. I got something to fall asleep to. It's great. Yeah. I just want something on my television. So who cares about the bowl game? Just put them on. And then you'll go, oh, that player's really good. And then the next thing you know, that guy's in the NFL. And you're like, oh, I remember that one bowl game on, like, I don't know, December 27th I tuned into. And it was, like, University of Miami versus Arkansas. And it was a good game. And you just watch it. And you're like, oh, yeah, those guys are in the NFL. That's crazy. So I had so many of those moments, which is pretty cool. Right? So they're showcasing their talents and abilities. I think it's fine. Right? More football is good. It makes everybody more money. Oh, the boosters. Watch. I see. I don't great. necessarily feel like that. I feel that you know what you want is better matchups. You do. You don't want to see East Pennsylvania State against West Pennsylvania State. You know. I, I mean, do. It, that might I be don't. good. That might, especially rivalry. I, I like that. Actually, that's a good. That's a good. Uh, I don't care. I, t- teach me about the school. Teach me about the sports culture there. I think I'd rather good. see the, the the juggernauts face each other. I'd rather see well, the better you will. team. Yeah. You can, though. That's what's great. You just don't well, have now to Now with the tournament, yes. Now with the tournament, you, you yes. In the past, that wasn't the case. In the past, yeah, you... so it, it's solved. It's great. So I get to watch my meaningless games. You get to learn about another part of the country, and it's all great. And then you can see the juggernauts go at it, and you can just change the channel if you don't like it. That's yeah, what's and great. How, and I have. Show, how many people show up at those games? A lot. You know, yeah, they do. A lot right, of family. You get a lot of the alumni showing up. Uh, yeah. you know, hey, our team's in a bowl. It's exciting. Yeah. Uh, okay, hey guys, moving on to the World Series here. So, uh, have you heard about the you, the Phillies World Series U- U.S. economy jinx? So they mm-hmm. won. <clears throat> they won in 1980, and we had a major recession when they beat yep. uh, KC. Then in 2008, they beat the Rays, and again, a major great recession. Yep. Uh, so, do we have to root for the Astros in order to avoid an economic depression? <clears throat> <laughs> what do you think? I think it's really funny that all these parallels are always made between like great historical events and sports. Yeah, uh, it means absolutely nothing. It's a coincidence. So I'm going to keep on rooting for the Phillies just because I love the city. But I mean, yeah. I'm kind of rooting for the Astros too because of 
Justy Baker, and then I've gotten to know Mauricio Dubon pretty well, who's their late defensive replacement in center field. But, um, yeah, it's it's an interesting World Series. I was super bummed that they canceled game three. That was going to be played on Halloween in Philadelphia. Yeah. That would have been epic. But, you know, the rain happened, so that's unfortunate. I, st- I still remember but, when, uh, the Giants beat uh, Texas. Uh, that one of those was a war- – uh, a Halloween when I was taking my daughter out trick or treating, it was like, Wait, oh, hold on, sweetie, just, just, just give me another, you know, maybe. Yeah, maybe. <clears throat> Halloween uh, games are awesome in any sport. They're fantastic, so I really like that. <laughs> um, I- I'm kind of rooting for the Phillies, you know, partly still against the, you know, a little upset about the uh, cheating thing. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, eventually you got to get over it. But uh, I can Bryce- tell you with confidence that the Astros are not the only team cheating. In 2017. Go. Okay, good. Okay. That's, that's a very they were, good They're probably one of like 10 teams cheating. And the thing is, so I mean, I the cheating really part about, about like, okay, a pitch coming, I mean, you still have to hit it. And you still have to, I mean, that's, 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 a, that's a small part of cheating to me. But listen, I, I'm not trying to make any waves here, but there's a lot of teams that were doing the exact same thing that the Astros were in 2017, even in the playoffs that were with the Astros. So uh, I don't really. Care. But they were doing it different than banging on cans or something. <laughs> No, they were using buzzers and all the stuff, too, that the uh, Ashes were alleged to. The, I mean, the Ashes were just dumb enough to get caught. Really. Gotcha. That's, gotcha. that's where well, it comes down to. So that, I'm, it's funny because Bryce Harper is one of these guys who was like, you know, you loved him when he first came out. Then it was like, yeah, I don't know. You know, he's kind of got an ego. Uh, but I kind of felt sorry for him for not being on the Washington Nationals when they won. So it's like he's getting his chance now with the Phillies. So there's, there's a part of me that wants the Phillies to, to win. Let's talk about Bryce Harper for a second. He was yeah. 16 years old on the front of Sports Illustrated saying the next Babe Ruth. Like, think about that, the weight you have to carry when you're 16 years old, right? All that. Well, he had the ego to go with it. So it was, a, it was like, of, of course I'm the next Babe Ruth, you know? <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, you could crumble. And how many times have we seen that exact same cover athlete amount to nothing on Sports Illustrated? It's happened a billion times. But he's followed through, man, and he is becoming a cult icon in Philadelphia. And yeah, trust I me, wish we had gotten him for the Giants. <laughs> yeah, he was this close. He was this close. Yeah, close. yeah. No, but it, it, and there is a jinx. Uh, there is a jinx about being on Sports Illustrated, though. I can't remember exactly. Is, yeah. it, uh, is it a person? It's a person, right? No, it's not Sports Illustrated. It's on the cover of Madden or MLB The Show. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, for the NFL. And Madden. It's, it's like it's if you're Madden on the video curse. game. Gotcha. Yeah, Madden curse. Oh, the, oh, they a Madden. That's right. That's the one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, okay, I remember now. Um, but it's been pretty exciting. I mean, the Phillies coming back in game one. Uh, well, I like the fact that you don't have two mega quadrillion uh, salary teams that are in Yankees there. and Dodgers. That's Yankees what. didn't make it. The Mets didn't make it. The Dodgers didn't make it. You know, all these teams with bloated payrolls didn't make it, although Bryce Harper is obviously not a cheap guy to, to have on the Phillies, but no. they don't have a lot of other major super salary players. And I think the message is sent that it's really how you spend that money versus just spending money that can get you to the World Series and get you a championship. Well, the Phillies did sign JT Real Muto for a huge contract, Nick Castellanos to a huge contract, and Kyle Schwarber to a big contract. So not like Bryce Harper, but they spend money. Trust me, they're they're towards the upper tier. The Astros are smart, though. The Astros are usually around mid-tier spending, and they just get the job done. They just Their analytics and their player development is what every – professional sports organization dreams of not named the Golden State Warriors because the Warriors well, do it better than If you do. remember the A's, they always seem to have a decent, not this last couple of years, but they always seem to have a decent team. And they were always at like close to the bottom, if not the bottom of spending on players. Yep. Yep. Still are. Still are. Yeah. So, I mean, so. And playing Oakland, you know, just, I don't know, the, you know, the stadium is just, it's not up to par and, and, you know, playing in Oakland, you know, so it's like you, as a player, I guess you just have to totally weed all that out. Just concentrate on baseball, your teammates, you know, want to win the World Series and, and knock out all the other events, right? You're still a Major League Baseball player. And at the end of the day, you got some, you got a chance to make some real money like Matt Olson did. He just got traded over to the Atlanta Braves and he signed a $200 million contract. It's easy as that. So you just got to perform at that level and show everybody you're valuable. So. Yeah, yeah, very, very good. Uh, let's see, anything else you want to cover? We got uh, one more minute before we go to our uh, last trivia question. Yeah, I got one thing, guys. So I don't know if you heard the, the news today. 
uh, takeoff from the rap group Migos passed away tragically after a shooting outside of a bowling alley. He's one of the biggest rappers to die in a rap group since I don't even know when. It, it's really, really sad. Yeah, and he was, and he got shot. He wasn't a part of any altercation. He was just a bystander and got shot. It's really, really sad. Where, where was and, it? Uh, outside of a bowling alley in Houston. So, in Houston. Uh, just, just really sad situation. And I think you're going to see some ripple effects of just, I don't know, maybe even more gun control or something like that. It's just, it's really sad. It's a really sad situation. So, that kind of got me this morning. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I always wonder about that, the, I always wonder about the gun control because it's like if you're a bad guy, you're not going to. You don't care. In fact, you want gun control because then it means everybody else doesn't have a gun, right? I mean, the bad guys don't voluntarily go, oh, okay, well, now now it's a law that I'm not supposed to have a gun. Or, well, right? That's why I really feel that we have to work harder on ammunition control, which is one thing that nobody ever talks about. That's but a very, now, that, that's a good point. If you don't have the ammunition, you know, all you're going to do is use it as a... Uh, club a hammer yeah, yeah yes that's a good point yeah, and 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 it is allowed to be con it is constitutional to control ammunition sales and uh possession that's not against the second amendment believe it or not it's well you know that's a good point because the, the the right to bear arms doesn't say anything about ammunition that's not a good at point. all that's a very, and, that's a very good point been, there have been other localities like for instance sadly in los angeles they have to stop selling ammunition on New Year's, because of all the idiots that fire guns uh, up in the uh, air. Oh yeah, and, uh, yeah you know, that comes down, and yeah, no, that's a bad yeah. happened on the Fourth of July at the Oakland Coliseum. People were so celebrating in Oakland, shooting their guns up in the air, and there was bullets found. And I think somebody got hit at, at, at one of the games actually during the Fourth of July. I mean, if you think about it, that that's empty shell there. going up, uh, you know what, a at least a quarter mile. Uh, I mean, well, it's when it comes down. Oh, well, that's what I'm saying. Is that when it comes down, it's come down with a lot of force. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, third trivia question: What World Series player with more than 20 games? So we do have a uh, copy out there. 20 he has to have played in 20 games. Has the highest batting average in the series in his career, batting 391. He went 34 for 87. Okay. And again, we'll talk. I think it's probably in the 1960s. Is probably Darn. Looking at. Yeah. So my guess of Madison Baumgartner is no. flat out. No, that's a, that would have been a good guess. All right, stay with us. Sports Econ 101. We'll be right back with some closing comments. Don't touch that dial. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Last time for today, I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with F.D. Santangelo Jr. and Russell Jackman. Next week, I'm sure Vern will be with us. What World Series player with more than 20 games has the highest batting average in the series in his career with a... 391 average. He went 34 for 87. Uh, and I'll tell you, he was he was more known for being a base stealer. Mm. Got pitchers that's a base stealer. Talk about like a, I a totally a different and era. Kind of I didn't say pitcher. I said he's got oh, a 391 oh. batting average. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I, I was going to say Ricky Henderson since he said base stealer. That's the only one I know. Now, Lou Brock? Yeah, Lou Brock. Lou very good. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. You okay. Know, then. Have gotten that without the, probably you wouldn't have gotten that without the hint. Who no, for some Lou reason, Brock? I thought you'd said pitcher. So I was yeah. like, okay. No, because you said Madison Baumgartner when you were talking yes. about that. Yeah. I, I thought and, you were talking about You know about. what? I'd like to find out what, I mean, I don't know how many games he's been in. And, uh, for, I got know. one right now for you. Good. Madison Baumgartner has the best ERA in World Series history, and the worst is Justin Verlander at a six ERA. Yeah, yeah, I read a I've stat saying about Justin Verlander. Oh man, that's a killer. Yeah, I read a stat saying that um, Madison would have to throw like another twenty-two innings and give up home runs in every inning for to to match Verlander's oh. ERA right now. Yeah, well, what, what is three home runs in a row, Russ, without getting an out? There you go. Yeah. Thank Same you. Yeah. Yeah. What what, Thank what is Madison's uh, uh, ERA? Like zero point two five. Wow. Yeah, that that was. I mean, I still remember that uh, against Kansas City that last game. Okay, Are you guys ready for our uh, thoughts for today? Okay. Never, <laughs> never. Okay, I was I was going to buy a book on phobias, but I, I was afraid it wouldn't help me. And uh, how did the skeleton know it was going to rain on Halloween? He felt it in his bones. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> there great. we go. Okay, we got at least one chuckle. All right. Tune in next week too. Hey, Russ, you still on the phone? Yeah, <laughs> I didn't hear any laughing on that one. Barely, okay. barely. barely. Okay, tune in next week to Sports Econ One Hundred and One. Of course, if Vern was here, he'd be cracking up. We're going to be discussing more sports topics 
from a business perspective and asking more sports trivia questions. Thanks for listening. On behalf of our team, I'm your host, Edward Brown. We'll see you next week. Good night, or adios, everyone. <laughs>